All right, welcome once again to my class. Today, we're going to look at two different kingdoms. Kingdom Monera, that of course contains your bacteria, and then Kingdom Protoctista, that contains your algae. So what are the characteristics of Kingdom Monera? Their cell type is prokaryotic, as I had earlier explained in the last video. Their cell wall, however, is made up of polysaccharide and amino acid. They do not have a nucleus, so a nuclear membrane. That is why they are prokaryotes. They are unicellular organisms made up of one cells. So you know the normal organization of life where you have cells coming together to form tissues and the tissues forming the organ system, the organs and the organism. In uh, organisms found in the kingdom Monera, they do not have tissues. So they are just stuck at the cellular level. Their mode of nutrition is autotrophic. From the word auto, it means self, like automatic. It means that they can produce their own food themselves. And so in the autotrophic mode of nutrition, we have two types. We have the chemosynthesis and photosynthesis. And so when you say an organism is chemosynthetic or photosynthetic, it means that they can produce their own food themselves. But when you say an organism is heterotrophic, it means it depends on other organisms to produce their food. So organisms that are found in Kingdom Monera that are heterotrophic are either saprophytes or parasites. If an organism is para uh, saprophytic, it means that it feeds on decayed material. But if it's a parasite, it means that it lives on a host. And so they occur everywhere due to the following reasons because they have very simple unicellular structures, very small in size, and they have resistance of vegetative cell to adverse um, environmental factors. It means that they can adapt easily. And of course, their endospores are very, very resistant. And they have a lot of diversity in their mode of nutrition. So basically, they can adapt. So when we take classification on the basis of the mode of nutrition, I earlier talked about the autotrophic mode and the um, heterotrophic mode. So photoautotrophs, they, they produce their food from sunlight. Using sunlight, they can um, produce chemical energy from sunlight. But for chemoautotrophs, they produce their chemical energy from inorganic substances. Then the heterotrophs are the consumers of the world. Next examples of prokaryotic heterotrophs include the parasitic bacteria and the saprobes. On the basics of reactivity with oxygen, we have obligate aerobes. These ones need oxygen to function properly. Without oxygen, they cannot thrive, they cannot live. But the obligate anaerobes do not require oxygen. Oxygen is in fact insidious to them. Um, faculty anaerobes, on the other hand, can do with or without oxygen. So they are like the bridge. So remember these three types of um, organisms in Kingdom Monera based on their reactivity or reaction with oxygen. These are the diverse bacteria forms. The ones that are round are called the cosci. The ones that are rod shape are called the bacilli. And the ones that are a form of spiral are called the spirilia. And so if a cosci is stacked together, like if it's two round forms, you say diplococci, four tetrad and all of that. Just try and remember all the different forms of bacteria. And so that brings us to the new kingdom, the kingdom Protoctista, in which we have the algae. Algae are plant-like, but they are not plants. They are not classified as plants because they are mostly unicellular. Although we have um, different filamentous forms of algae and all of that. So the special features, the salient features of algae is that they are autotrophic. They require oxygen, but they do not have true roots, leaf or stem. Please, their body is made up of a thallus. They do not have true roots, leaf or stem. And of course, they do not have your vascular tissues, which is your xylem and your phloem. Okay? And they live in 
marsh or watery areas wherever you have water surfaces for example if there's water on your fence you see all those green patches growing when there's water anywhere you see some green patches those are basically algae and there's some species of algae and fungi i'm finding association with each other to form the, the lichens and they are free swimming algae called the phytoplanktons the species are attached to the bottom of shallow water and the edges of seas and lakes. They are called benthic. In their appearance, they can be microscopic, small in size, unicellular, or they can be very, very big in size, like your kebs or seaweeds, up to 100 meters long. The branch filamentous algae are attached to the substructum and are differentiated into the lamina, the stipe, and the old fast. These are basically basic structures that you can find in the algae, and each of their functions are listed on your screen. And then you have to also know that the different forms of algae are the clamidomonas, as you can see on the image, the chlorella, the spirogyra over and the likes. Their reproduction is basically three, vegetative reproduction, asexual reproduction, and sexual sexual reproduction. For the vegetative reproduction, it means that um, from the parts of their parent's body, basically they can just break. When they break, they call them um, fragmentation. Then when they split into two equal halves, that is called fusion. And then they can form tubers and budding from their surfaces. But for asexual or asexual reproduction, they form what we call zoospores, aplanospores, and akinites. They are various structures that they use for their asexual reproduction. Then for the sexual reproduction, two different gametes, the male gamete and the female gamete, come together to form a zygote. If the, both of the gametes are exactly the same, iso means same, so it becomes isogamous. If it's not the same, like they have the similar size, but they both are flagella, it's called anisogamous. But if the um, female is larger than the male gamete, and the male gametes can swim towards the female gamete. That means if the male gamete can, can swim, that means the male gamete has a flagella or a flagellum. But the female gamete is non motile cannot move. So it's called the ogamos. We have different types of groups. We have the cyanophyta, chlorophyta, eucanophyta, pyrophyta, and the likes. And they all have their common names and their different examples, as you can see on your screen. For example, if I say brown algae, I'm talking about the pheophyta. If I say red algae, I'm talking about rhodophyta. If I say green algae, I'm talking about the chlorophyta. Then if I say cyanophyta, I'm talking about the cyanobacteria, basically, the blue-green algae. So these are the various structure of the algae. They have their cell wall, unlike the cell wall of the kingdom monera organisms that are made up of um, amino acid. Cell wall of the algae is made up of cellulose and pectin. Flagella that they use for movement, but it's basically not all of them that has flagella. Then they have a place where they produce their starch called the pyranoid, and they have their eye spot that is sensitive to light. And they have different types of pigments chlorophyll A, B, C, D, E. They have um, carotenoids and biliproteins, also called the phycobilins. And these phycobilins can be classified as phycocyanine and, and phycoerythrin. And um, basically, the phycobilins or these biliproteins are soluble in water. The food reserve is basically different forms of starch and they are autotrophic, as I had earlier explained. That means they can produce their food themselves. And we have the positive roles of the algae in the environment, photosynthesis. For example, in the sea ecosystem, in, a, in an ocean or sea ecosystem, the phytoplankton are basically the primary producers on, in the food chain. 
or in the food web. So if they are not there, there will be no basic source of energy in the aquatic ecosystem. And so they also produce oxygen, of course, as a byproduct of photosynthesis. As I have earlier said, producer in the food chain. And of course, they are used as food and for various forms of industrial production. They also have negative rules that can cause a lot of sicknesses and diseases. For example, this microcytes and abena and the afanizamenon can produce certain toxic compounds which have been seen to induce harmful effects like loss of weight and all of that. So when you just read up on all of these things, like when you see the four points here, you will see some filamentous algae that are also detrimental to the environment. And so we have come to the end of the class. This is your evaluation. You should be able to describe the group of living organisms called algae, listing some examples, describe the, and the, briefly the various alga forms with at least one example for each form, classify algae, listing their various subdivisions with example for each, what rules do algae play in the aquatic ecosystem, mission, other ways algae affects man and the environment. So thank you.